Welcome to the PBC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. My name is John Chepkevich, Director of Scouting for the PBC, and joining me today is an All-American guard from Baylor in 2020 NBA Draft Early Entrance. <laughs> what's going on, Jared? Hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm uh, doing fine in this pandemic, you know, but I'm here. <laughs> That's good, man. I'm glad to see that you're doing okay. I uh, hope you're able to get some shots up here, kind of figure out a way to make the best of the situation. And, uh, you know, in light of all the craziness going on, wanted to try something different here, kind of, you know, take this opportunity for us to sit down and go through some of your film from this year, some of the things that make you such an intriguing NBA prospect that translate really cleanly to the next level. Maybe touch on a couple minor areas that, if you brush them up, it'll make you all that more translatable of a prospect. 100%. No, uh, this is a great. Uh, uh, I appreciate you doing this, and you seem on it. I like watching film all the time, so, yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Awesome, man. Cool. So we'll hop into your offensive strengths right now. And what particularly stood out in digging through the film is just how comfortable you are in navigating pick and rolls in so many different ways, both as a scorer and as a facilitator. So we'll start this first clip here against TCU. So you get this ball at the top, sort of reset, initiate the pick and roll here. So when you come around this to the left and get into the elbow here, what are you seeing in this situation? What are you reading both from your initial defender and then the help side defense? What is your read in this situation? Yeah, uh, I don't know. As you, as you can see, coming off, uh, the big's kind of fairly low. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I really wanted to, I could have pulled up at the elbow and shot a shot. But I felt like he was low and, and kind of in a uh, in a vulnerable situation because, you know, my big's rolling and then I'm coming down, too. And uh, also, I'm thinking about, you know, the tags. Uh, if you see the yeah. guy on the block, he's he's probably going to tag. And uh, so but I think uh, here, if I remember right, I think the big is just, you know, too low. And he's kind of like in a in a in a I don't know. Uh, a state so I kind of just you know kind of hesitate a little bit and I just finished with the left like yeah that's that's right there he was just too low yeah I mean uh, one thing that I've noticed is you know when you're going around these pick and rolls a lot of times it can seem like maybe the big's in an all right position yeah but you're really quick with just a kind of somewhat horizontal diagonal step to get right around them and get that little scoop play up like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a really interesting kind of unique quirk to your game. And you just put guys in jail like that all the time. And, you know, it seems like you did a great job here too of, you know, as you come around this um, Desmond Bain over here in the corner, doesn't really pinch on you at all to give this guy any support. Mm -hmm. And you just know you have that angle to the left and just a yeah. great feed by you there. Yeah, the guy looks like he's in good position, but he kind of wasn't. But yeah. yeah, I mean, good position. You know, good position against you is different than good position against some other guys. You know how to take advantage of this stuff. Yeah, sure. So this one, we'll let it play through once, and you kind of do it again, right? Like it seems like that guy might be in all right position to kind of cut you off, but first you come around this. You want to maybe say, you know, what you're seeing here that causes you to sort of split it and then attack down the middle. Yeah, so it's a horns action, and uh, the good thing about this, I can kind of pick what defender I want to go against. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I kind of, and this one just chose to go left, and uh, the guy, he just jumped out a little too fast, mm -hmm. and uh, I just reacted and, and, you know, saw the split. And then this is, this guy came, and then I can, you know, he's coming towards from from one direction, and, I, uh, you know, I just fake as if I was kept going and, 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 and faked and go the other way. And uh, again, like you said, I got him on my on my hip and got him on my shoulder, and uh, it's kind of an easy finish from there, off two feet. So, yeah, it seems like you do an awesome job of like, kind of reading when people are off balance, right? Like right. This guy, his momentum's way this way. Yeah. You do that smooth between the legs, <laughs> you know, very fluid, no wasted motion, gets you right into the middle. And again, like you said, this guy's really jumping out at you. Mm -hmm. That momentum again, just put him in jail on the right side here. And, you know, you just have a great knack for that balancing craft. Appreciate that, man. <laughs> Next, we got a clip of oh, yeah. here. <laughs> I mean, that's a smooth little behind the back to sort of reject the ball screen, right? Uh, what is it maybe on this particular play, if I can get it back to the top here? 
you know, how is the defense kind of reacting to this pick and roll initiation that causes you to whip that behind your back and then kind of read and react like that? Yeah. So uh, Matt Coleman is guarding me. Guard me. He's pretty like a pretty fast defender. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they do a pretty good job of fighting over the screen because they sometimes they hedge, sometimes they don't. But, uh, you know, I didn't go when I was coming off the screen, I didn't go as fast as I normally would. And I kind of knew that he was, you know, kind of going to overplay it and kind of, you know, try to beat me over the screen. And then the guy, the guy, the guy that's hedging is thinking the exact same thing. Right. And um, I just think it's it's about your pace and, you know, kind of, you know, playing, playing, like thinking the letting the defender know what you're going to do, but knowing exactly what you want to do. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and then I, again, I get the guy on my, on my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. So like a combination of knowing the scouting report and kind of right. baking guys into you know, what you're anticipating them to do and then putting them in an uncomfortable spot. For sure. Yeah. And then again, another one of these <laughs> where someone steps up to help, you still just blow right by them, get your two foot gather, easy layup. Yeah. This one here, this spin move is just crazy. Let's run that back from the beginning again. <laughs> so you get down here baseline off this wing pick and roll here, right? And Mm -hmm. I guess what what do you see here that causes you to kind of react and do that spin move? Because you've got a guy down in help in the restricted area here, but like you just read this perfectly and know what to anticipate and just get that easy little layup floater after the spin move there. What did you see that kind of caused you to react that way? Yeah, I think it's uh you know I think I could, we messed him up on the ball screen with the we flipped it when he went under or or, or what or not. Yeah, he goes in there, so we flip it, and then he's yeah. running from the three point line to try to guard me at the block, and then like again, I, I just use his momentum right uh, to work for me, and uh, and the guy in the hole, he he's kind of like not in the hole, but even if I do spin and he's still in the hole, then you got Maceo in the corner if I uh, if need be, if he was still stuck in the corner. So yeah, is this like a drawn up play here? Because it seems like there's this little like hammer action going on over on this side that causes this guy to come out of help, right? Yeah, no, but that's that's Mark just being Mark. He's uh he likes setting, you know, flare screens and things like that. And uh yeah. Actually the rescreen is not part of the play either. We just me and Freddie are just kind of on the same page and I'm you know, I tell him if he goes under, we rescreen it sometimes. Yeah, you guys just have that chemistry and kind of know how to play off each other and yeah. this is, you know, a great team effort yeah. here and then great individual effort by you to kind of read and react again. Right. Fun stuff, man. Fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, next one here against Kansas State. This guy seems like maybe it's because you're beating him by 13 already that he's trying to kind of make something happen and get up in your grill a little up toward half court here. But, you know, you guys just punish this. This is one of the things that I think is probably the most unique thing about you as a prospect in this class is your ability to come off pick and rolls and punish people with pull-ups from deep. So mm -hmm. this one, maybe you want to just talk through, you know, what you read here when the big kind of switches and, you know, how you kind of created that space there. Yeah. So this play is like a roll and place play. And uh, mm -hmm. so as I come off the screen, I kind of read, you know, what his footwork, you know, is he above the three point line? Is he, you know, below? How's he like, you know, how he's standing? All that I'm thinking about. Uh -huh. And uh, and I think I already hit two threes uh, before yeah. this. And uh, so I came off. And he just, you know, he kind of didn't look, you know, too too sturdy as far as, as a big. And I think um, he's expecting me to come off, and I kind of just stop and, and pop. And uh, coach coach gives me the green light to shoot those threes too. And uh, but yeah, and there and and uh, Kansas State's defense as far as tagging is extremely well. So I think uh, I would have had Matt Mary coming on the road place if I if I didn't have the shot. Right. Yeah, I mean that's just a great job of you know all these previous clips we show how you punish these bigs by blowing by them and getting to the rim. Seems right. like he's anticipating that you give them that hang dribble and like, look how off balance he ends up being here. Yeah. Create perfect space. Your guy gets back a little bit, but that contest isn't going to stop you there. So it's a really nice pull up. And this is part of how you ended up being in the 91st percentile as a pick and roll scorer this year is being able to both get to the rim and stick these, little uh, pull-up threes when the big drops too far, or there's not enough of a hedge, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of similar thing on this one here, would you say? Maybe it's not as much of like the off balance as the previous one with yeah. the big, but you kind of read and react and see that space, right? Yeah. 
Uh, usually they blew, they blew it or ice it on the side. And wow. I think the big thought they were going to ice it. So he jumps kind of to the right. And then he, he's just, you know, not, not there trying to come back to the, to the, uh, to the left. I'm, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it's not no man's land. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I know why he, he was kind of in no man's he, he thinking He's thinking that he's going to blew it to the side and then I end up coming over. So, yeah. But that's going to be huge for you at the next level is like, you know, a lot of these bigs are going to be pretty buttoned up in their pick and roll sure. coverages and identifying those every once in a while when they're a step off or half a step wrong or, you know, don't read it perfectly. You got to punish them for it. And here you yeah. do it perfectly, a little step back. And I like how, you know, as opposed to the previous clip, you're going to the, your right. This time you're going to your left, just as comfortable pulling up headed that direction as well. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Next against TCU here. Seems like this guy's causing a little bit of chaos up top, but <laughs> you kind of reset, get your pick and roll going this way. And I'm going to let this play through because this is just a nasty little pass with, you know, you have your right to left crossover here to kind of create this angle for the pocket pass, the little one-handed pass for the easy dunk. You want to maybe talk through like, you know, as you eventually come around this screen, what are you seeing that kind of makes you know that this pocket pass is going to be, be available and yeah. is it just instincts that take over when you do that little right to left cross into it? Or what is that there? I, I think that's, I think that's instinct a hundred percent. But this ball screen is like an open side ball screen. So I know that there's no tag except for on the other side of the hole. Uh -huh. And then uh, they did blew it. So I knew the big was out of place again and I got over the screen. And uh, I think that's the worst thing you do when a, all, the defense is trying to blow it on the side. I yeah. get over the screen and the base chasing me, running over. And, I, you know, he just almost creates the window for me. Right. And, uh, the right to left is kind of insane, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. No, I mean, that was, that was just really smooth. And it seems like this weak side guy over here, like I think it's probably a matter of you knowing personnel too, right, that you know you have a shooter in this weak side corner. Yeah, as not helping as right. much maybe as he might on another player. Yeah. You know you have that opportunity, right? Yeah, sure. yeah, and I trust Freddie from that spot too to finish it. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure, yeah. So another nice, just good all around team chemistry and good instincts and reactions by you there. Now we've got Iowa State again. You're matched up against you know who a guy who's projected to be a lottery pick in this draft. Come around this pick and roll here. Another just great read on this pass. We'll run this one back from the top. Uh, you want to maybe just talk through, you know, as you're coming around, getting the screen set on Halliburton there. What's your read right now in this situation? In the yeah, uh, it's kind of hard because it was kind of in transition. But as far as, you know, any pick and roll, you want to read, you know, the guys helping on the roll, man. And uh, if you can see, like I did a little hesitation right there to read. Yeah. And then uh, to see if the big was going to read, to think I was going to pass it to the roll man. Mm -hmm. And he kind of didn't react to it. So then I, I dribbled again and I, and I hit him. And, uh, yeah, so I, and I don't think nobody tagged. Yeah, he was right. late tagging the M1. So, yeah, it's really just reading the help, help the defender. And the, the ball screen does a great job of getting you advantages, you know what I mean? Right. It seems like on most of these, it all comes back to you reading the tagger, right? That's yeah. the main, that seems to be the main thing that you're looking for and deciding how to attack these. And then you just have that, you know, you have one of the best handling packages in college basketball and you seem like you do a great job with your handle of being able to manipulate both the point of attack defender and the big man that's like switching or hedging, right? And it creates all these angles for you to either pass it or drive. So another really nice one there, get the and one. Big play going in, you know, almost to halftime, get you to extend that lead there. 100%. This one's a nice rejection. This is might have been one of my favorites here. That was so, a favorite. <laughs> yeah, this is good stuff. So just a great read by you at the top here, but you want to maybe talk through what ultimately leads to you rejecting this screen. Is it just him jumping up and kind of trying to ice it and send you this way? And then yeah, you know, I, yeah, I know they're I know they're icing on the ball screen. So yeah. it's almost like I'll, all right, like I want you to, uh, you know, I want you to feel like you did a great job icing it, but the whole time yeah. I'm, I'm refusing it, and uh, that just kind of leaves me one on one with the big, and then uh, like kind of kind of the Iowa State, the guy was kind of in the hole. And yeah. in this situation, the guy was actually in the hole and Maceo was open in the corner. I suppose the other one, he wasn't. 
and uh you know aco just splash called me well, i mean that was that was crazy man i mean like the, i like the you know you know the ice is coming knowing the scouting report but if you stop it right here like the fact that you're gonna whirl through this and have the wherewithal to hit your guy in the corner after all that even with this guy digging and helping on you like yeah. you got three guys collapsing on you on this b big 12 logo here and you still are right here you're able to get this pass out there somehow just just an awesome play all around like you would just on, on a split second make that spin move seems like this guy is, might be able to get a hand on the ball but you kind of like go up and then under and pick it out to the corner right into the shooter just a great play and your drive and kick ability i think is going to be you know very cleanly translatable to the next level with your ability to put that pressure on the d and kick it out to a really well spaced nba offense right 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 and it's even more space on the an nba it's, it's gonna be crazy yeah does that excite you like the idea of you know sometimes college basketball you thrived in college basketball even though it's like a little slower paced and can be a slugfest sometimes does it excite you the idea of getting to the nba and having to pace up a little bit and have the spacing be all that much more wide for you to operate yeah, a hundred percent. I think uh, you know, as you've seen, a lot of the clips when the big are, is you know kind of far off the screen. Right. Uh, that just gives me so many options. So many options that either pull up right behind the screen or pull up right off the screen, or come downhill and you know make a move on the big. And uh, he might seem like he's in a good place, but he's really not. And uh, I think the spacing too is going to be you know make the ease a hundred percent, the reads hundred percent easier. So yeah, it excites me a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I think your game's just super conducive to that type of environment, right? You did a great job in the context of the Big 12 and of college basketball and, you know, how everything was there. But I think it's just going to expand and open up even more for you. This one, just you just slice up three different guys and ultimately end up, you know, making the correct read here for, for the lob. Uh, from the guy diving in from the corner you want to maybe just kind of speak through you know how you're reading and reacting to this one and how you kind of get this guy to jump out of his shoes and yeah. ultimately manipulate the entire defense for the lob yeah uh, I think the like once again I, I, th I know they know the scout report or yeah. me at least and uh, I like to shoot behind the th the screen a lot so if I come off and he's going back he he kind of you know thinks I'm going to shoot it and I, yeah. you know, I hesitated this time and then uh, once I do that, I just try to get in the teeth of the defense and see who helps. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark, Mark, the guy's the guy. Uh, he's in the in the charge circle. He's helping on the roll, and he forgets about Mark, and uh, just throw it up for Mark Vidal. That's all you got to do for him. And uh, yeah, yeah and even the guy helping in from the strong side corner was you know. So I had to cross over, uh -huh. and uh, like this guy right here. Yeah, yeah I had to cross over right there. So that that took a little tight dribble, mm -hmm. and then just throw it up so yeah i mean you ultimately got right to the middle of the paint and had right. all five guys facing you right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the best thing that you can do as right. lead guard right is to be able to get all that attention on you and just open up things for your teammates and again you know this is a tight game against coastal carolina who like okay. you know probably wasn't expected to be in this game against you guys but you know you kind of stepped up down the stretch here made a big play and i'm sure this got you fired up and got some momentum going into the end of the game <laughs> you see the bench yeah <laughs> all right next we got wvu i mean that behind the back dribble was crazy right but what we're going to touch on here are maybe some potential improvement areas though mm -hmm. right and you're an awesome playmaker in the pick and roll you make some great reads Every once in a while, I think you might be uh, kind of overextending yourself and trying to make some tough ones. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this is a tough pass, right? And these kind of skip passes, I feel like, are probably there when the help is coming across and you have one guy kind of playing two over on the weak side right. as opposed right, right, right. to you are at home. Just, to, just like a thought, maybe you want to quickly talk through what you were kind of reading in this situation and maybe what you could have done better here. Yeah, hundred um, percent. It's kind of tricky because you know they can't. They kind of came and set a ball, uh, a double drag, uh -huh. and then nobody, nobody ended up rolling. I'm not saying it's my their fault, but uh, so. And then once I got to the baseline, I kind of put myself in a bad position. Uh, I think the best thing for me was probably jump out of bounds and then hit Maceo. 
uh, right. drift. And uh, yeah, and I think it's, it's just kind of my fault. I kind of came way too fast or kind of didn't slow down and, and think about, you know, what I'm actually doing. I was just kind of reacting off of, you know, what I saw firsthand. Yeah. And uh, But yeah. Yeah, and it's not necessarily like a true weakness in your game. It's just like you're in the pick and roll a lot. You're asked to create a lot and, mm -hmm. you know, just maybe limiting – uh, these types of situations or like one or two of these every game, if you can cut those out, it'll just make you all that more efficient. Right. Uh -huh. So we'll move on to this next one here. As soon as this clip wraps up, here we go. So again, this is kind of similar to the play that you made earlier with, to vital, right? But uh, this time it seems like you reject the screen the help doesn't actually come the whole way across, right? Like you see yeah. him diving across from the corner, but yeah. the guy stays at home and you kind of force it. Yeah. It's just one of those things where, you know, in the moment it seemed like it might be there and this guy right. might give it to you. Yeah, no, 100%. I kind of, pre I do this a lot, a little bit, I, uh, kind of predetermined, you know, the read or, you know, I've seen this before, so I'm like, oh, it's going to be there again. And uh, I think I kind of, you know, I, I made the wrong decisions. For, I could have hit, Davion in the corner because this guy was the one that was actually helping and uh right, so, right. yeah you know what I mean so yeah mm -hmm. I, I definitely just made the wrong week and I think part of that is because I kind of predetermined and I saw this before I guess you could say sure yeah and like the the kick to Davion in the corner here I mean it's open but it's not that's a kind of tough read with this guy right here right, right, yeah that's that's tough so if you made that that'd be a hell of a pass happen to kind of predetermine it and turn it over here but again, like that's not happening way too often. Just something to keep an eye on, you know? For sure. And I think we have maybe one more of these before we get into your uh, defensive stuff. So here again, just kind of end up trying to force this one across after you come around this pick and roll here. So like, okay. again, I see what you're seeing here. Yeah. Right? You think this guy's tagging here. Yeah. It's just a good defensive play by him, honestly. It really is. It really is. And then, uh, you know, Mark, he's kind of uh, limited in shooting. So usually you guys would be in the corner, so the tag wouldn't be as wouldn't be as easy as he was. Right. For him. But he's – yeah, but uh, I think his name is Do a Little. Yeah, he's a he's a great player. He he knows what I'm thinking, and he kind of he kind of got that one for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, this maybe comes back again to NBA spacing, right? Like mm -hmm. maybe – in the NBA, you don't have two guys in the paint here. You have a guy out in the corner. Yeah, in the corner, yeah. Makes this decision a little tougher, right? They has to fully commit to the tag or fully commit to staying out on this man. Might just, you know, be a prime instance here of how things might open up for you going forward. Right. 100%. All right. So now we're going to get into the defensive end. Before okay. we get into it, I mean, I know that, you guys as a program really pride yourself on locking in on D and causing chaos. Uh, and you are kind of a guy that's helping lead that charge. Do you want to maybe speak to, you know, Baylor's mentality on defense, your mentality as an individual on defense and kind of how you see that translating for you to the NBA? Yeah. Uh, you know, having a great defense is, is so important to having a, a, a good team because, you know, it's one of those things that you kind of you can't control. And uh, for us, we kind of prided ourselves on always playing defense, no matter how our offense is going. And uh, I think that helped us a lot throughout the whole year. And, uh, and even in those big games uh, in away games, we, we still have to play defense and sometimes our shots and stuff weren't falling. And uh, so, yeah, we, we prided ourselves. And I think Coach Drew and the staff did a great job of preparing us throughout the summer and, and uh, in October, just, you know, you know, finding our defense uh, identity. And I think uh, that showed throughout the whole year. And I think you can translate definitely in the NBA. For sure. And that's definitely something to hang your hat on, right? Like you were saying, if your shots just happen to not be falling one game, you know, being able to lock in like this on D can keep you on the court, even if you're having a cold shooting day. So, Wanted to highlight this possession here. It, it hits on a lot of things, right? So you fight over this screen firstly. You cut off this pass for a little DHO. You switch. You get up in this guy's grill. Move your feet. Cause a tough shot, right? You want to just, like, maybe talk through the sequence of this defensive possession and, like, your engagement throughout and kind of what you're seeing and how you're reacting. 
Yeah, can you play it one more time? I kind of didn't. It, it like yeah, yeah, I, a got bit. I got you. I got you from the top here. So let's start back here. Okay, cool. I got you. Cool. All right, so you're off ball there. You're right around that screen. Do you like, I guess, is this maybe just scouting report against them or just a tendency of yours in general to like, kind of get low and duck around these screens and shirt tail guys. Is that something that you've consistently been yeah. doing or something that you've kind of gotten more accustomed to? Yeah, uh, I definitely had to, had to get more accustomed to that since my freshman year. And uh, yeah, this guy is a shooter and uh, you know, you definitely got to stay attached to him when he comes off screens, you can't go remove. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as I got on the screen, you know, it kind of, you know, he, if he, if he didn't have the shot, it was kind of, I kind of won. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, on the ball screen, I kind of try to keep it on the side, as you know, our defense. Yeah, exactly. And that first one, that's Oscar Sheebway, I think, setting that screen maybe, right? Yeah. That's a big dude to get around. And you, you know, you take a bump, you take the physicality, fight around it. And then ultimately, all you want out of a defensive possession, right? It's not always a block or a steal, but you force a really tough shot there, right? Yeah, long two, too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just playing into, you know, over the long run, if you force guys to take those shots, that's a win for everybody, right? Right. No, 100%. Oh, uh, the defense is, is crazy. Yeah. And this one, I think you do an awesome job on this one. You're off ball here. They set a little bit of a down screen, but then this guy tries to attack you baseline. Mm -hmm. and you just do a great job of kind of, you know, recovering, getting down to the baseline here. And making sure not to foul, right? Like this might be a situation where yeah. he kind of, will kind yeah. of go up into you, use yeah. your physicality, but you just keep your hands straight up, force a really tough miss there. Uh, is that something that yeah. you're trying to force guys baseline and then kind of get there and cut them off and then think that they might be able to draw a foul? Yeah, uh, and definitely I tried to stay attached to him the whole time. Uh, you know, I, I kind of figured he was going to draw baseline because of, you know, how, how we play defense. And then uh, especially at this point, I wanted to make sure I didn't foul. I wanted to make sure, uh, you know, he I, like my hands were blocking the passing, you know, passing lanes. And uh, yeah, I kind of forced him down too far and he, he got caught. But yeah, because yeah, this might be one of those times, like you were saying, the passing lanes, maybe he would want to try to skip out to one. <laughs> skip out, yeah. yeah. But you do a nice job of getting your hands up there, getting the whole way down deep here and you make it pretty impossible for him to make that pass or even to get a good shot up. Just yeah. great, great all around defense there. I think we got two more defensive clips here, if I'm not mistaken. This one against Arizona. So high profile matchup here, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, this, that's about the toughest shot that anyone can take there, right? Sure. You got, Let's see. You're matched up out on the wing. I think this is Josh Green. Mm -hmm. He tries taking you baseline. You want to just maybe speak through maybe when you're against a wing like that, that mm -hmm. you maybe just know his tendencies and kind yeah. of try to force him where he doesn't want to go. No, 100. percent And uh, I think this is actually a drawn up play. Now I look at it, but uh, I think with the wings, like you said, I think I want to make them change direction and stay on their hip the whole way. Uh -huh. and, uh, and this one kind of similar to you know. And Jemias, uh, I kind of drove based on my, and he feels that I'm, I'm, I'm there, and I make him change direction, and it's kind of hard once at that point because he, he lost his plan of attack, and, uh, and then just keep my hands up, make sure I don't foul when he tries to shoot, and uh, yeah, that's kind of what I saw there, right there. For sure, like great job of cutting him off and then not fouling here because it's easy, right. like in the heat of the moment when yeah. you get to that spot, it's easy to foul someone there. 100%. You just do a great job of staying disciplined on this one. And then you get out on the break. I think this actually is our last clip. Get out on the break and then have the finish and transition as well. Yeah, right? that was a big bucket right there. Yeah. What's that? That was a big bucket right there. I'm not going to lie. That a big yeah, man. That's huge. Being able to like contribute in all these different ways ultimately, right? Like mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're a combo guard sort of, right? You can play the one, you can play the two. That adds some versatility in and of itself, right? You can defend you know, quick point guards, you can defend guys with length and cut them off on their drives, right? You have all these different ways to contribute in a way that I think makes your value very clear at the next level, right? Right, 100%. And also, I think uh, just my, 
you know, uh, mentality as far as, like you said, just wanting to win and uh, buying in on a culture and buying in on a, on a program and, uh, and finding success when you buy in. And uh, that's, I think that's, like you said, the things of my versatility of playing uh, on the ball, off the ball, and playing guards with the ball and guards without the ball. I think that's that's something that I pride myself on, and uh, you know, I you know I like to win a lot. That's that's just kind of what what I am. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you just answered the question I was going to ask for me right there. I was going to ask, hey, okay, for these NBA teams, you know, who who are you? Who can what can they expect from you on and off the court? And I think that just summarized it right there, man. I mean, mm-hmm. having that mentality, that drive to win, and being able to add value in all these different ways. I I think. You know, any NBA team would be lucky to have you and plug and play you into their system and know that they're getting both a hell of a player and a good person. So, no, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I definitely think uh, what you do off the court affects what you do on the court. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just, you know, I think I'm poised. I think I'm uh, pretty level headed through all the ups and downs of the game basketball. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think uh, I breed winning and uh, just in, in any situation, I think so. But yeah, no, it was fun. It was, this is was really cool. I, I like this, what we did. Yeah, man. I thought that was a great time too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, best of luck the coming weeks, coming months as you sort of navigate this pre-draft process um, amidst all the uncertainty. I know that as we just saw here, what you bring to the table really shows on tape, shows in the numbers. And I think teams that are doing their due diligence and yeah. catching up on their tape, they're all going to realize that if anyone interviews you, they're going to kind of see the personality that we were talking about in those traits. And uh, I think that you're going to be a really nice NBA player. So Jared, yeah. Yeah. thank you very much for joining, man. Stay yeah. safe out there. You too. See you. Appreciate it.